Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart and the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. It is a joy to welcome you to our service today as we celebrate Trinity Sunday. Today, we are pleased that Austin Lippert, our Associate Minister for Nurture and Discipleship Care, will bring us the message and we welcome her to the pulpit again today. As we continue in worship, I want to say a word of appreciation to all who supported our Sunday dinner on the grounds last week. We had a great event and it was wonderfully blessed by God. We ask that you keep in mind our next missional activity, which will be June 10th and 11th, when we will have a drive and drop for the Epworth Foster Care Family Project. If you would please notice in your connection or at wsmethodist.org online, our connection there, a list will be provided for you as to what they are collecting. We're excited about this opportunity to continue our ministry with the Epworth Foster Care Program. So many things are happening very quickly as we progress into summer, beginning our in-person Sunday school classes. Be sure to check our website to know which classes are meeting on site, which classes are providing two different ways of participation and those that are meeting only by virtual means. Also want to remind you that we are holding in-person worship at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Please register ahead of time. Also that we'll have our next outdoor service at 845 on June the 6th. This will move us back into a more typical routine of two services on Sunday morning and yet still provide us an opportunity to provide an outdoor experience as well as an indoor worship experience. I ask you to join us now as we worship the Lord. Please join me in today's call to worship found printed on your screen. Oh, what a blessing, how can I express it? Out of the fullness of rapture I sing. Now by the Father received and adopted, I am a child and an heir of a king. I am adopted, a wonderful love, heir to a heritage purchased above. Tell it, my soul, and joyfully sing. I am a child and an heir of a king. Please join me in our opening prayer. Loving God, gracious parent, you have such deep love for us that you have adopted us into your family. This love is not fragile like human love. We can never do anything that would cause you to stop loving us. 
Please help us embrace this rich love. Let your spirit and your love so fill us that we can love all those around us the way you do. Empower us to live the way you want us to. Help us to claim our status as your children and live lives worthy of our divine heritage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now our lesson comes from the eighth chapter of Romans verses 12 through 17. Hear these words. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it isn't an obligation to ourselves to live our lives on the basis of selfishness. If you live on the basis of selfishness, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. All who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. You didn't receive a spirit of slavery to lead you back again into fear, but you received a spirit that shows you are adopted as God's children. With this spirit we cry, Abba, Father. The same spirit agrees with our spirit that we are God's children. But if we are children, we are also heirs. We are God's heirs and fellow heirs with Christ if we really suffer with him so that we can also be glorified with him. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Please join me now as we share together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using a statement of faith of the Korean Methodist Church. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life 
everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I have wonderful friends. I am blessed with a great friend group that stretches from my childhood friends that I have known practically since birth to friends I have met in just the last few years. Um, Within my friend group, I know several families who have adopted children. 
Some have adopted American-born children out of the United States foster care system. Others have adopted from orphanages in China, Russia, and Uganda. Each of these families has had a different experience, but there are some similarities among them. One of the many things I see that binds them together is the fierce love that these parents have for their children. The commitment to and love for their children shows at each step of the adoption process. Adoption, whether it's domestic or international, is not easy and is something that is not entered into lightly. But it is knowingly entered into by parents who love these children and make a choice to welcome them into their family. A second thing that binds these families together is that the children, even if they are babies, need to learn to trust their new parents. Because of their experiences in foster care or in an, or in an orphanage, these children may distrust the love that they feel and the family that they have are permanent. They're not sure that what they have is really what they have. So they test these bonds. They, just like every child everywhere, needs to know that the love of their parents is genuine and permanent and that they can trust them. When children trust the love of their parents, they are able to settle in to the family and live according to the family values, knowing that they are part of this unit. A third thing that binds them together is that the children in these families are full members of the family. They share in all aspects of the family life. They go through all the joys and also all of the heartaches that come with belonging to a family. As I was reading and studying and meditating on this passage, I kept remembering my friend's experiences uh, with adoption and how similar it is to our experiences with God. God made a choice and went through a lot of effort to adopt us into the divine family. God has always loved us, but time and time again, we chose ourselves over having a relationship with God, spurning the offer of divine love. However, when the time was right, God became human to give us a physical connection to God. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, and he modeled for us what being a child of God entails, what it looks like to be part of the divine family. God, God humbled God's self to become human and showed us the extent of God's love for us. Jesus also modeled for us what a relationship with God looks like. It consists of time spent with God in prayer, uh, worship, and studying the scripture. It also includes putting God first in our lives and living the way God wants us to. When we live our lives God's way, we give up our self-focused, selfish ways and instead follow God's will. Jesus modeled for us how we are to subsume our will to God's. He showed that we are to say no to our desires and instead to submit to being led by the Holy Spirit. Thus, God, through the actions of Jesus Christ and by sending the Holy Spirit to us, has adopted us into the divine family. With our place as one of God's children, we now have that loving family connection that each of us innately craves, and we receive the assurance that we are loved and accepted. However, like all children, we have to learn to trust that God really does love us and that there's nothing that can change that. We sometimes feel the need to test this because it's hard for humans to believe that there's not a line that once we cross it, God says, I'm done with you, you're out of the family. However, God has repeatedly shown throughout history that there's nothing we can do and no way we can be that can separate us 
from God's love. God still called David a man after God's own heart, even though David committed adultery with Bathsheba, got her pregnant, and then had her husband killed to cover it up. God still loved Jonah, even when he went in the opposite direction to the way God had called him to go. God even made a bush grow up to give Jonah shade as he sat bemoaning the fact that God had given the Ninevites a reprieve from judgment. Peter denied knowing Jesus three different times, yet Jesus still loved him and fixed him breakfast on the beach and asked him to feed and take care of his flock. This list of the flawed people that God loves and accepts and keeps in the divine family can go on and on right up to today because none of us is perfect. However, no matter how much we mess up or test God's love for us, this love does not change. God is faithful and we can trust God to be the parent who loves us fiercely even when we aren't acting lovable. However, just like children who test their parents' love, once we figure out that God's love is there no matter what, we need to internalize this knowledge. Getting to this point means we know on a basic instinctual level that we can't lose God's love. At this point, the knowledge moves from our head to our heart. And, the cha and that changes the way we live. We live differently the way God wants us to because we have the assurance that God loves us and is with us and nothing can change that. This love gives us the confidence to be different and live our lives God's way. Just like with earthly adoption, God makes us full members of the family. We are co-heirs with Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son. So no matter what, we will be part of God's family and, all, and have all of its benefits for eternity. This means that we will share in all the triumphs and tragedies that befall our family. Now much of it will be good, but not all of it. Jesus didn't have an easy life and he faced his share of suffering. So the same goes for us because we are his siblings. When we follow God's spirit, we will live God's way and that way is different from how the world wants us to live. This different type of life puts us at odds with the prevailing culture and means that we, like Jesus, might be denigrated, ostracized, or suffer hardship. However, when we are assured that we are part of God's family and co-heirs with Christ, we will find the courage and the confidence to act even in the face of fear. We also will know that when things in our lives are going, falling out of control, just the wheels are coming off, it isn't because God doesn't love us or that God is absent. It's just that sometimes stuff happens in life. Thankfully, because of our adoption, we know that God will be with us as we face these problems, so we will never be alone. The Holy Spirit will also empower us to meet all of the challenges that we face and persevere, because sometimes victory just means we continue to endure in the face of great adversity. The assurance of God's love and our place in the family, though, is what gives us the type of endurance we need for those times. So through Jesus, we are adopted into the divine family, which means that we are Jesus' siblings. But this isn't just an individual thing. God loves everybody, which means everybody is our sibling. Uh, because God loves us all. So we are all part of the divine family and need to treat each other as beloved siblings. What an incredible gift 
God has given us. You are part of God's family, a sibling of Jesus and co-heir with him. Think about that. How does this incredible news change the way you live? Does it make you bolder, more compassionate, kinder, more generous? What will you do with this knowledge, this wonderful inheritance that you have? We worship a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this loving God, the three in one, has included us in the Holy Family. So go live into this divine birthright, knowing that God's love for you will never change, no matter what. Thanks be to God. And now go into the world with the confidence of knowing that you are part of the divine family, a beloved child of God and sibling of Jesus Christ. Let that give you boldness and courage whenever you need it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>